Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> I guess I've not started yet. Good morning. Good morning to you. Hello. <clears throat> Today is Thursday, um, April the 14th, and I'm Tony Taylor, and I'm coming to you from Fort Mill, South Carolina, and I am here to share my devotion to pray with you and for you, and to let's lift up some gratitude this morning. Um, Today, I'm going to be reading some from the Book of Common Prayer, a liturgy for ordinary radicals. <clears throat> and it starts out with Katera Takawathi Watha, and dates to 1656 to 1680. And she was born in 1656 in present day New York. Her mother was an Anglican, uh, a Christian native, and her father was a non Christian Mohawk turtle chief. When Tekawitha was four years old, a smallpox epidemic killed her parents and her brother and left her with seriously impaired eyesight and disfigured face. Inspired by the Jesuit missionaries at an early age, Tekawitha was baptized and assumed the name Katira, probably in honor of Catherine of Siena. The following year, French conquerors reached her community of Asanan and destroyed much of it, burning it to the ground and massacring many of the natives. Katira escaped on the St. Lawrence River to a village of Christian natives where the, she dedicated her life to chastity, prayer, and care for the sick. She was the first Native American saint in the Catholic Church and is often called the Lily of the Mohawks and the Apostle of the Indians. O oh Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you as the day rises to meet the sun. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. May the guarding of God shelter us against the winds and the wiles of the devil. Um, this morning, we're going to, um, the psalm is going to be uh, Psalm 7, 71, 1 through 3, and 15 through 17. Good morning, Alan and Jean Wilkie. I'm so glad to see you. Jean, I hope you're healing good. Good morning, Janice, Kelsey. I'm so glad to see you this morning praying for you. Good morning, Loni. Uh, good to see you and praying for you. Good morning, Sarah. Um, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that in just a minute. Praying for you, Sarah. Good morning, Rhonda. Praying for you. <clears throat> uh, lifting up unspoken prayers for, um, oh, thank you all for the prayers for my unspoken clarity and peace. Lord, in your mercy, we lift up this blessing. Good morning, Clara. So good to see you. I have my stitches out, and it's healed up nicely. Still hurts, but healed up nicely. <clears throat> Soccer, poor thing, has pancreatitis. Not a severe case, but um, a, a case of pancreatitis. We had, she got fluids yesterday. She got, um, drew blood, urinalysis. Um... She's going to be on low-fat, uh, prescribed dog food for the rest of her life. So we've got to keep that in check. No more table scraps. Uh, no more uh, bully sticks. She does love those, but no more. No more. So we don't want this to reoccur again. Um, she's still puny, um, but she um, uh, is enjoying her chicken and rice that David made her and uh, eating and drinking and... Um, so she, we hope she, her little tummy will turn the corner and um, she'll be back to her normal self. We've got to get her prescription food, though, um, and get her on that. Yeah, she was pitiful. Two hours at the vet yesterday after I got my stitches out. Two hours. Whoa. Took a long time. But they got, a, they got the diagnosis and we know what's wrong and we know what to do. And that's part of it. Part of giving you hope is that you've got a plan. Um, you're going to work toward it. Um, Stacy Woodruff is in good spirits, will need extensive jaw surgery. Uh, Lord, in your mercy, we lift up Stacy Woodford, Lord. Um, please bring her comfort and peace, uh, Lord, and uh, clarity for decisions she must make uh, as she enters into. Uh, discussion of surgery, Lord. In your mercy, hear our prayers. Um, 
Let's see. Um, you know, Alan, I don't know Stacy Woodruff. Is, um, I, I don't, I probably missed something yesterday. Um, so if you could um, share, share with us. And I would like to um, um, pray for the victims of the tornado in Texas that was awful and the, um, the subway victims that were shot in New York. Lord, in your mercy, let us stop right now and pray for those victims, the gunshot victims in New York, Lord. Uh, be with them. Uh, let them feel your presence, Lord, that they are not alone. Uh, bring them healing, Lord, and comfort. Uh, Lord, all of the victims of the tornado in Texas, Lord, be with them as they try to struggle and figure out what to do next. And uh, allow those people around to reach out, uh, extend a hand of help and comfort to those uh, who are injured and those who have lost everything. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayers. Hear our prayers. Um, the psalm today is Psalm 71, 3 and 3, 13, 15 through 17. In you, O Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be ashamed. In your righteousness, deliver me and set me free. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. You are my crag and my stronghold. My mouth shall recount your mighty acts and saving deeds all day long, though I cannot know the number of them. I will begin with the mighty works of the Lord God. I, shall, I will recall your righteousness, yours alone. O oh God, you have taught me since I was young. And to this day I tell of your wonderful acts. May the guarding of God shelter us against the winds and the wiles of the devil. Of the winds and the wiles of the devil. Um, we're going to go back into Exodus today. Exodus 25, 1 through 22. And then the New Testament reading is in 1 Thessalonians. Oh, Loni, I'm so sorry. Um, Lord, in your mercy, we lift up um, Loni's uh, brother-in-law uh, who died this morning, Lord. Uh, please be with his family. Um, let them feel your love and your presence. Be with Loni as she navigates this with her husband. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Hear our prayers. He was one in hospice, had gone into hospice. Is that right, Loni? Was his name Philip? If I remember right, was that his name, Philip? In Exodus today, I'm going to read from the New Living Bible. Jehovah said to Moses, Tell the people of Israel that everyone who wants to, to may bring me an offering from this list. Gold, silver, bronze, blue cloth, purple cloth, scarlet cloth, fine twined linen, goat's hair, red dyed ram's skins, goat skins, acacia wood, olive oil for the lamps, spices for the anointing oil and the fragrant incense, onyx, onyx stones, stones to be set in the ephod and in the breastplate. For I want the people of Israel to make me a sacred temple where I can live among them. This home of mine shall be a tent, pavilion, a tabernacle. I will give you a drawing of the construction plan and the details of each furnishing. <clears throat> this home of mine shall, using acacia wood, make an ark three and three quarters feet long, two and a fourth feet wide, two and a fourth feet high, overlay it inside and outside with pure gold, with a molding of gold all around it, cast four rings of gold for it, and attach them to the lower corners, two rings on each side. Make poles from the acacia wood overlaid with gold and fit the poles into the rings at the sides of the ark to carry it. These carrying poles shall never be taken from the rings, 
but are to be left there permanently. When the ark is finished, place uh, inside it the tablets of stone I will give you with the Ten Commandments engraved on them. And make a lid of pure gold, three and three quarters feet long and two and one quarter feet wide. This is the place of mercy for your sins. Then make images of angels using beaten gold and place them in the two ends of the lid of the ark. They shall be one piece with mercy, with the mercy place, one at each end. The cherubim, the angels, shall be facing each other, looking down upon the place of mercy, and shall have wings spread out above the gold lid. Install the lid upon the ark, and place it within the ark, the tablets of stone I shall give you, and I will meet you with meet with you there and talk with you from above the place of mercy between the cherubim and the ark will contain the laws of my covenant there i will tell you my commandments for the people of israel and that's where we will stop today rick rick was in hospice okay thank you The New Testament reading is 1 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 22. And this is Paul writing um, a letter to the, to the church, um, Paul, Silas, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians. Um, Loni, I, I want to lift your family up. Um, Uh, um, Rick uh, and, and your husband were um, close, and uh, this is going to be a, a hard time, um, but I want to lift you up in prayer. Lord, I'm lifting up Loni today in prayer and the grief that her family holds uh, right now in this space for Rick. Um, be with her family, Lord. In your mercy, hear our prayers. I know I prayed a few minutes ago, but now that I know his name, I, I like to pray with the name if I can. Um, I'm so sorry. Um, you know, brothers and sisters, that our visit to you was not without results. We had previously suffered and been treated and outrageously in Philippi, as you know. But with the help of our God, we dared to tell you his gospel in the face of strong opposition. For the appeal we make does not spring from error or impure motives, nor are we trying to trick you. On the contrary, we speak as those approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel. We are not trying to please people, but God who tests our hearts. You know we never use flattery, nor do we put on a mask to cover up greed. God is our witness. We were not looking for praise from people, not from you. Or anyone else even though as apostles of Christ we could have asserted our authority but instead we were like young children among you just as a nursing mother cares for her children so we cared for you because we love you so much we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God but our lives as well surely you remember brothers and sisters our toil and our hardship we worked night and day in order not to be a burden to anyone while we preached the gospel of God to you. You are our witness, and so is God, and how holy, righteous, and blameless we were among you who believed. For you know that we dealt with each of you as a father deals with his own children, encouraging, comforting, and urging you to live lives worthy of God and calls you into the kingdom and glory. That's where we'll stop today. Um, they had a tough time. They were they had to leave Corinth, and um, uh, they were being persecuted. And in um, in this of establishing the right balance of work and um, and rest, the um, the confusion about Christ's second coming, the confusion about what it is to be a Christian, 
Um, but flattery must have been something here that people were used to people buttering people up and flattery. And uh, I guess it was bothering Paul. He wanted to set that straight. Um, and this is the first visit of Paul's to Thessalonia. Um, and he had been imprisoned in Philippi before that um, for his work, for his spreading of the gospel. So um, he is setting the stage here, um, offering up what he believes is important and letting people know that they didn't take advantage. Um, so he must have had a conscience about that or believe that people were talking about him or about the apostles and uh, he wanted to set the record straight that this is different. This is a different time and place. Um, and it, it was worrisome to him. Um, and that he was wanting to make sure that they weren't thinking of the apostles in that light. When I, when I was um, preparing for this morning... Alan, I did not know that. I did not know about Stacy. I don't. I don't know what happened here. Um, oh, she must be going through so much trauma. I didn't know if it was a dog accident or what. I am so sorry, Lord. We're lifting up Stacy for overcoming this trauma, Lord. Um, this event, uh, this time in her life when she needs to be surrounded and supported by loved ones. Uh, uh, allow her to heal, Lord. Uh, allow the doctors to make good decisions. Lord, we lift her up to you. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayers. Hear our prayers. Um, to realize that right now, in the present moment, how important that is, um, to be able to do that and to step out of the past and ruminating about the past, um, and in anticipation of the future to be present and to really experience life in the moment right now with what we have and that's all we know is what we have right now um, make now the primary focus of your life um, you know bef when we go through life on autopilot we are ruminating about the past and thinking about the past anticipating what's next to come and we are missing what's in the present moment we're missing the experience of right now. Um, so intentionally today, notice where you are and what you're doing and try to be fully present in each little thing that you do. When you do that, it pushes out the worries of the past, the anticipation and expectations of the future. Um, Eckhart Tolle calls this the delusion of time. Um, Sometimes we're trapped in our minds and time about the past and the future. Um, and when you do that, when we do that, when I do that, I miss the now. I miss the present, the present moment right now. I, I completely miss it. Um, and so this is really important. Um, it is all there is, is this moment right now. That's all we have. This moment right now. Life is now. Um, It is really the point in your mind, the point in your mind um, of thinking about and experiencing all the emotions of the now. Um, when you're thinking about the future or the past, you're missing the now. And this is what I was just really profound to me this morning and studying is um, that that's going to take intentional practice for me to be in the present to be fully present and not autopilot thinking about what I've got to do tomorrow or the next day or what happened yesterday. And, you know, in thinking about it this way, nothing happened in the past. It happened in the now. And we're, we're remembering it in the past. It didn't happen back there. It happened in the present. And if we don't think about it correctly in the present, it's not going to be thought correctly in the past. Um, uh, so thinking, shifting from just time 
to being present, I believe is even um, more powerful for me as in Holy Week is to be present in the now, to experience um, our day fully present as we approach Sunday, to be fully present this week, uh, to try it, experiment with being present where you are, with the people you are, you are with at that moment, or with what you're doing, fully experience the now, where we are right now. It will make you feel more alive. It will make you feel um, like um, you're fully engaged. You're fully engaged. Um, but it's going to take breaking old patterns for me uh, because I'm always wanting to be busy. Um, so whenever you start thinking about the past and the future, you've got to pull yourself into the now. And prayer, prayer is a way to do that. Pull yourself into the now. Um, so that is something that I was studying this morning, especially in the scriptures, and thinking about where Paul was and trying to be present. Um, and he was really worrying about the past and what anticipating. Um, so he was struggling with this, being present, being fully present um, in his letter anyway. Embrace the moment. Thank you, Nancy. I appreciate that. Alan and Jean, that is great. Um, Alan said that he listened to an evangelist yesterday that used the Exodus example as God having Moses building a godly place on earth with specific, very specific directions and how now we have Jesus to give us specific instructions to building a specific godly person, not a place, but a person. Uh, thank you for sharing that, Alan and Jean. I appreciate it very much. Um, I hadn't tied that together from the Exodus to this, but this that is, uh, that is a great tie-in from what I read in Exodus about building the ark and specifically how it would look and that um, God was going to give him instructions, and now we are uh, always looking to Jesus for giving us the instructions we need. And Paul is struggling with that in First Thessalonians, a baby church, new church, people st still trying to figure out what this is about. And he, he's sending words of encouragement and making sure they don't think it's just like it was before. Um, you know, how people behave before. Um, I, I like that, Alan Jean. That is awesome. Thank you for sharing that. It's a great connection. I'm going to look at that differently now when I read tomorrow how that is um, connecting the directions from God and Moses and the ark and Jesus and giving us our instructions today. Thank you. That's, that is a great uh, way for me to segue out um, uh, of this devotion today. It's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I'm looking for other prayer concerns this morning. Um, yesterday I posted on Facebook. It was a little over two years ago that I started the devotion and um, uh put up my uh, grace cup, coffee cup, and my prayer beads. Um, thank you, Rhonda, my prayer beads. And uh, beginning this journey with you, you prayer warriors, and I am so grateful for you, uh, how you've changed my life. And um, to know that you can establish a, uh, a holy place with prayer warriors and holy friends online and you all have just lifted each other up in ways I have never imagined when I started um, but connection and relationship is what our faith is about and this has been shown to come through however we're able to do it in whatever means we can do it is to grab each other um, support each other in our faith and pray and share 
connection, belonging, relationships. Um, I think that's the very foundation of what we do together to grow as disciples of Christ. And um, I'm honored. Um, you put up with me sliding on late and um, I, uh, it, it's, um, I get, uh, I'm just, I'm so grateful. I just don't know how else to say it. Um, you do so much for me in my life and the connections I have with you. Um, I, I don't want to give them up. And um, so I, I honor your time in the mornings and appreciate your connecting with me and the insights you share with me. I, I really do appreciate that because I'm a, 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 a learner just like you and you share with me your ideas and it lifts me up and I appreciate that. Um, and that's what we're here for is to encourage and lift each other up. Um, and I thank you. I can't tell you enough how much I appreciate it. Um, go before us, God, that we may follow in your steps. Go behind us, God, to steer us when we stray. Go beside us, God, as your strength and our joy for our journey. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. Um, we need to continue to pray for the Ukrainian uh, people, the refugees, um, and find ways to support them uh, in any way that we can. I'll see you tomorrow morning at 8.30.